And I'm not saying that I'm correct. I don't know if I'm correct. But I'm going to tell you, I don't think Africans' perspective and philosophy of life needed a name for the continent. I don't think Africans had a name for the continent. Because Africans were deeply steeped in nations. So you had the Konso people, or the Gala people, you know? Or you, you had nations. You didn't have, like, the country of Ghana, so to speak. Ghana basically reflected a concept of gold. So they didn't call their countries. They were nation-based people. So that these terms that we have now, like Spain, Macedonia, Slovenia, even when you're in Greece, you're, you're, you're dealing with principalities, you're dealing still with nations. But the organization of nature's created, of nations created cities. Cities created countries, countries created continents. And now we're living calling words, what did Africans call the continent of Africa? I don't think they had a word for Africa. I don't think they had a word for the continent because they were based on nations. They were more concerned about what they called their nations as opposed to their continent. It's a different way of thinking of the world. See, the first thing Europeans do when they take something over is they build fences. And they create boundaries to, to Africa and to indigenous peoples. We didn't own the land. The land wasn't ours. We were caretakers of the land for the greater spirit that had endowed us with life. So the idea of owning something or labeling something didn't exist. There might have been other labels that describe different phenomena, normally natural, but there were principalities. Like it wasn't called Macedonia. It was called something else, but this land area became Macedonia. That's where Philip whose son was Alexander, came from. And Aristotle was Philip's tutor, 